So what happens now? Once the rail line is restored, the Island Corridor Foundation says one of its first priorities will be to get commuter rail service up and running. It would be known as the Salish Express, and local mayors, particularly those on the West Shore, hope it's the solution to a commuter headache that has plagued the region for years and has gotten worse with growth in the Western communities. Louise Hartland has that part of the story. She joins us now live with more. Louise. Hudson, it would start as a pilot project as early as next May, but if the Salish Express gets traction, it could be here to stay. This is the day that rail service was saved on Vancouver Island. This is the actual day. And this is the day Langford Mayor Stu Young has been waiting for. So don't put the people over here on some other train service when I'm staring at this empty every day and all the communities up and down the island are sitting here starving for economy, starving for jobs. Let's make sure that everyone in the island wins here. So it's not like building a billion dollar LRT to move 10 kilometers. Young says restoring the ENN line as a commuter service is also the gateway to solving transportation problems in the region. Like this goes right through the center of our town. This has to be the corridor we use. I don't see a better corridor. The Island Corridor Foundation calls the commuter train portion of the plan phase two. But Graham Bruce says it is starting to build a business plan now, connecting key players to ensure the line is a success. I would hope that we could put a plan together and get it back to this area, uh, say by September, maybe a little bit earlier. A lot of the data is already there. None of this is new. It's been around. So it's a matter of putting it together and actually then uh, putting in, in place the cost. Some of that data came from a joint report with BC Transit. And we found that there is no business case for running a commuter interrail service. BC Transit says the Salish Express doesn't make financial sense. Conventional bus and the service for BC Transit is $94 an hour. An interrail service that we did in the study with the Island Corridor Foundation was between $757 an hour and $1,257 an hour. <laughs> The Island Corridor Foundation says as many as 2,800 people could use the ENN as a commuter service daily. But with the decision to remove the rail portion of the Johnson Street Bridge, there are also questions about how passengers will get to downtown Victoria. The exact location for the final stop hasn't been determined, but the Island Corridor Foundation says it will likely be here. And the design will include a BC Transit hub to get people off the train, onto a bus, and into the city. It's when the commuter rail line, if indeed it is running, we'll work with them to make sure that those riders that stop in Vic West can get to the points that they want to get to in downtown Victoria. Young says now it's time for the communities to buy in. Is there going to be more money for future governments? There'll be more money from every single government here if we prove that the need, that the need is there and we actually support it and we actually get people on it. And after years of struggling to restore the lines, getting commuters out of their cars and onto the rails will be the next challenge. The federal government says another benefit is that these lines go right by and stop at CFB Esquimalt. So all of the commuters coming from Up Island to the base will be able to use the service. And as well, Hudson, there's always that federal shipbuilding contract that was awarded to C-SPAN last October, also expected to bring thousands of jobs to the base. All right, Louise Hartland reporting. Louise, thank you. You're welcome.